What's going on guys, Scott here, and if you recall, the amazing company Comic Cave Studios sent NerdSync out to the red carpet premiere of Captain America Civil War. It was a blast. I got to hang out with some amazing nerdy YouTubers. I got to walk on the red carpet. I got to take selfies with some of my favorite celebrities. It was a ton of fun. Too much fun. I will say. It was super overwhelming and I loved every minute of it. Um, and also, I got to see the movie. So of course I want to talk about it, but don't fret. I'm not going to spoil anything. I guess that depends on your definition of a spoiler. I'm just going to try to be as vague as possible, saying things that I liked, things that I didn't like without getting too specific about it. Scene one, we open with Captain America. No, I'm kidding. I'm not going to. This movie is very, very good. The action and the acting are just spectacular. It doesn't really feel like a Captain America movie, it feels like another Avengers movie, which is to be expected. I mean, you have all of these characters coming together, fighting each other, and just having these amazing interactions. I almost kind of feel like this movie should have taken a cue from Rogue One and not have been called Captain America Civil War, but really just Civil War. A Marvel story. Because yes, while Captain America is at the center of this, you pretty much get equal screen time with Iron Man as well. In fact, there were certain points of the movie where I thought, is this an Iron Man movie? You get to see more of Vision, more of Scarlet Witch, more of Ant-Man. I don't know how they managed to juggle all of these characters, but it almost felt like a lot of them had the biggest roles they've had in this movie than they've had in any other Marvel movie. War Machine, for example, feels like he really shines in this movie. And when you realize that they had to not just uh, juggle the existing characters, but introduce a bunch of new ones as well, it becomes even more amazing that they were able to do what they did. The big two characters that were introduced in this film are Black Panther and Spider-Man. Black Panther, just from the get-go, is one of the coolest characters that has ever been put into a Marvel film. He's amazing, and I just cannot wait for his solo film. So good. His action scenes were some of my favorite to watch because he is just, he, his fighting style is so different from everybody else that it's fun to see the clash between them. And then of course you have Spider-Man and I was on the fence about this. I really didn't want there to be another Spider-Man um, because I felt like we just had so much of him so, so quickly. I wanted to take a break. But then when Marvel was like, no, we're gonna put Spider-Man into this movie, I thought, they're just gonna shoehorn them in, aren't they? And it's gonna be very clunky and awkward. But it wasn't! It, I don't know how! I don't know how they did that, but it felt so natural and so, like, they had always been planning on it from the very beginning. And let me talk about Mr. Tom Holland here, because that kid is Spider-Man. Spider-Man's my favorite character, but I've always said that we haven't had a definitive Spider-Man on film yet, but that might change with this movie. I, every scene that he was in, he stole the show, which of course only makes me more excited for Spider-Man Homecoming. I just wanna see him given an entire movie all to himself and just let loose and see what he's got. And like I said, the action was all there. They had a ton of stuff referencing the comics as well, you know? Um, the story wasn't exactly the same as to be expected, uh, but they did have lots of, you know, uh, some verbal cues that characters say in the comics, some uh, action poses that you might have seen in the comics, all thrown in there, a lot of visual uh, Easter eggs for the comic book fans out there, uh, which was always, they're always fun to spot in these Marvel movies. And even though this movie didn't tell the exact same story from the comics, it did a really good job at taking what the Marvel Cinematic Universe already had and saying, all right, well, we'll twist this, we'll do this, and we'll mold it into Civil War. And everything made a ton of sense. Well, I say everything. There were a couple things in this movie that I felt were, of stretching it a bit too far kind of made it less coherent than I would have liked. There were a couple things that I really wish they would have done in this movie that they ended up not doing. In fact, I was so convinced that they were going to do certain things that I was just waiting for it. I was in the theater just like, this is it, this is the point, right? This is, oh no, okay, it's gonna be later then. Oh, this is it, this is it. Oh, okay, never mind. Um, how about now? So in that sense, I did leave the theater a little bit disappointed uh, that Marvel didn't go the route that I wanted them to. Uh, but you know, who am I to judge? Maybe Feige's got something up his sleeve. The motivations for the characters fighting, I thought were really solid. I mean, you see in the trailers and the comics everything that they're fighting for, right? Cap is saying, I don't want to, to do this registration act because it goes against everything we're fighting for. And Tony's like, well, we gotta be held accountable. And there's a really great scene where it's just the team arguing back and forth about these ideas Deals, and I didn't know who I supported in that moment. And if you remember, that was one of my biggest concerns for this movie was that they would paint Captain America as the good guy and Iron Man as the bad guy. And they still kind of did that. I mean, the movie is Captain America Civil War, so you're gonna go into it probably with a little bias that, you know, Captain America is supposed to be the protagonist. But then 
there's a part at the end where the motivations change. And that was the part of the movie where everything went from, you know, these arguing over these big ideals to making it very personal. Which is not a bad thing, the problem I had with it is it almost immediately painted Tony as the bad guy. Because his motivation at that point was literally the same as the actual bad guy of the movie. But that's just a little complaint. Overall, I really loved this movie. It was just a wonderful treat for my eyeballs to watch. The action was spectacular. The acting was so good. Chris Evans is Captain America, right? Like we know that, right? On my Marvel movie ranking scale, uh, Winter Soldier still number one for me, but this might actually come in as a close second, uh, right above the first Avengers film. I don't know, I'd have to watch it more. I mean, I watched the first Avengers film like six times in theaters. I probably need to watch Civil War at least three more times. And a huge thanks again to Comic Cave Studios for sending us out there. They were amazing people, really treated us well, and they make some awesome stuff too, like this Igor. I have him posed like he's about to drop a dope album. You can see he lights up as well. So cool. Guys, check them out. Link's gonna be in the description below. What did you think of Civil War? If you've seen it, let me know in the comments. We're also gonna be doing a podcast about the entire experience in LA, which you can find uh, in the link below. That's gonna come out this Monday, and it's gonna be all of the stories around the event that I haven't yet told. <laughs> a lot of stuff happened that I'm super excited to share with you guys. It was just an amazing experience. Unforgettable. My name is Scott, reminding you to read between the panels and grow smarter through comics.